Gas Metal Arc Welding, GMAW, Part 4. Learning objectives. We're going to talk about consumables, the welding wire we use, and advantages and disadvantages of gas metal arc welding. Okay, we're going to touch base on consumables, welding wire, because that's pretty much what it is, is just wire, like barb wire, minus the barbs. I know I, to the welding people would probably freak out, the people that sell this and tell me that it's something different, but from my perspective, probably chemically too, it's probably not too far off most of the carbon steel from being barbed wire. Anyways, um, probably get some detractors and hate mail from that. Um, bare or solid wire electrodes are made of wire compositions required for specific applications and have no coatings other than those required in the wire drawing. These wire drawing coatings have a slight stabilizing effect on the arc but are otherwise of no consequence. Solid steel electrode wires may not be bare. Many have a thin copper coating on the wire. The copper coating improves the current pickup between the contact tip and the electrode aids in drawing and helps prevent rusting 
of the wire when it is exposed to the atmosphere. Solid electrode wires are also made of various stainless steel, aluminum alloys, nickel alloys, magnesium, titanium, copper, and other metals. When the wire is cut and straightened, it is called a welding rod, which is a form of filler metal used for gas tungsten arc welding or brazing. And this form of the welding um, filler metal does not conduct an electrical current. If the wire is used in an electrical circuit, it is called a welding electrode and is defined as a component of the welding circuit through which current is conducted. A bare electrode is normally a wire, however it can take other forms. And then we're going to touch base real quick. I didn't delve into this just because it's a whole other universe uh, into itself, is metal core arc weld. Okay, for filler metal for GMAW, the filler metals for gas metal arc welding are listed under the same specifications that contain the requirements for gas tungsten arc welding. It's the exact same metal. It's basically a coat hanger. And I'm sure there's a metallurgist out there that's going to freak out and say, no, it's not. But it's your basic run-of-the-mill carbon steel, and they do some stuff to it, um, you know, to give it better properties. Um, in regards to being able to weld with it better or get a better deposition or electrical flow or whatever. But basically, it's just, it's just wire. It's run-of-the-mill wire. And as such, gas tungsten arc welding wire, which is TIG wire, is just a straight piece of um, this wire, this filler material. And it doesn't have any electricity running through it. It's just a rod. And we can see that on the... Um, the left and the center picture. On the right, we've got the wire. It's been necked down to a, you know, an 045 diameter, and it's in a spool so we can run it as an electrode and run it continuously. So just keep that in mind that gas um, tungsten arc welding filler material and gas metal arc welding filler material are the same material. It's just how it's packaged and um, how it's sized but you can have the same lot heat and lot number one for TIG and then one for gas metal arc welding and it's the same material but one's a spool and one's just in straight um, uncut pieces Here we've got the AWS classification system for gas metal arc welding electrodes. The first two letters are electrode and rod, ER. So this material can be used either as an electrode, we can run electricity through it for gas metal arc welding, or we can use it as a rod and just dip it in the weld puddle in gas tungsten arc welding. The next two numbers are the tensile strength. The difference between this and flux core is flux core is going to have a position designator. For gas metal arc welding, there's no position designator. You can use this stuff in all positions. Um, the S stands for solid, and then the 6 tells us the type of gas, usability, and performance, and the chemistry, and whatnot. So this is the AWS specification um, classification under AWS A518. This is just an explanation of the previous slide. ER stands for electrode or filler rod. 70 is the strength of the weld. In this case, it's a mild steel. The weld has a minimum of 70,000 pounds of tensile strength per square inch of weld. The S stands for a solid wire. Since the wire is solid, it always needs a form of shielding gas. So it always needs a shielding gas. The six indicates the chemical composition of the solid electrode. We'll see that on the next slide. Gas metal arc welding electrode composition. So what we're going to get out of this chart is, this is going to tell us the, um, the chemical compositions for the wires. The two elements that really come into play here for the ER70S series is going to be manganese and silicon. Silicon is going to come into play because it's going to help clean a dirty material. If you get some kind of weld um, out of a uh, China that maybe the mill isn't a high quality mill, um, 
there you might have a situation where you need to have a little bit of a little bit more silicon in the filler material because it's going to float some of the bad stuff out. Um, manganese is going to be a little higher in the ER70 S6 than it would be in an S2 also. So these are the some of the differences in the um, filler materials, but just realize that um, welding electrodes, GMAW welding electrodes, do have a chemical composition requirement. And for the most part, you know, it's going to boil down to carbon, manganese, and silicon being the big ones for, for this um, set of materials. Preparation for gas metal arc welding. Okay, so we got to clean this material before we weld on it with gas metal arc welding. Oil, grease, shop, dirt, paint, marking crayon, rust, or corrosion deposits must be removed from the joint and metal surfaces to a distance beyond the heat affected zone. Their presence may lead to arc instability and contaminated welds. Gas metal arc welding is not a welding process that is very forgiving in regards to contamination, oils, greases, any of that stuff. This is not like using um, E6010 or E6011, commonly known as farmer rod, that'll work over oil, grease, shop dirt, rust, paint, whatever, and you can still make a semi-reasonable weld. Um, gas metal arc welding is not that process. Gas metal arc welding is a high deposition welding process, but it's very temperamental and picky when it comes to water and slag and welding over um, mill scale and things like that. So you got to really watch it. And preparation for welding with the GMAW process is key. Also, you don't want to weld outside with this process unless you really have to. Because a slight breeze will blow your shielding gas away and you'll be end up with a lot of porosity. So just realize that if you're going to use the GMAW process, you got to start with a clean piece of material. And if, you, if you're dealing with welders and they're having problems with the GMAW process, start first place I always look is cleaning. You know, are you guys cleaning it good enough? So just something to think about. Here's a couple of photos of individuals making welds using the gas metal arc welding process. You can see they've got all their safety gear on. They've got hoods, their eye protection. They're wearing leather gloves. Um, also have on, you know, clothing appropriate that's not going to catch on fire. Some kind of fire resistant cotton shirt, leather gloves. And um, the one guy's got a piece of leather coming out from underneath his weld hood. You can see how they're holding the gun, you know, so they can pull the trigger. In the one picture, you can see the electrode, the wire protruding from the welding gun. He hasn't struck an arc yet. So this is just to give you a general idea of what gas metal arc welding looks like. And, you know, they're making some sparks, depositing some weld metal into a joint. The other person is getting ready to make a thin little sheet metal weld, but it should give you a general idea of what we're talking about when people mention gas metal arc welding. Gas metal arc welding advantages. There's no slag like there is in shielded metal arc welding or flux cord arc welding. All electrodes deposit low hydrogen weld metal into the joint. There's nothing there that's going to pick up hydrogen like a flux. So it's that's one advantage of this process. It's easy to learn. Unlike gas tungsten arc welding or shielded metal arc welding, if the parameters are properly set, almost anyone can weld after a very short amount of practice. Um, in a previous 
life I worked for uh, an outfit that manufactured um, a certain type of component. Anyways, they would they had the processes set up and a lot of their welders had weeks before been forklift drivers. So, I mean, they had a lot of really good welders, but everything was in fillet welds and they'd give them a crash course and the guy would show that he had the aptitude and away they'd go. And you're not going to do this to weld um, gas tungsten arc welding or shielded metal arc welding. So that's one advantage of this process. If you're just laying down metal, gas metal arc welding has this advantage over the other processes. Low cost equipment, few thousand dollars, you can be into a half decent um, setup for gas metal arc welding. High deposition rates, you don't have to remove slag and your um, electrodes come in 30 pound spools, not 14 inch lengths like uh, shielded metal arc welding. So you have higher deposition rates, which increases your efficiency. And almost all of your weld, all of your electrode is deposited as weld metal into the joint. So, and the consumables are pretty low cost. A few dollars a pound, depending on what you're purchasing. But it's relatively low cost. Gas metal arc welding disadvantages. Gas metal arc welding is sensitive to contaminants. GMAW process can only handle low to moderate levels of surface contaminants such as rust, mill scale, dirt, oil, and paint. So if you're going to be welding over a contaminated surface or a surface that isn't very clean, there's other welding processes that would probably do better, like maybe using a shielded metal arc with um, a 6010 or a 6011 filler material that can handle rust, mill scale, dirt, etc. Or maybe a flux cord um, filler material. Uh, GMAW is sensitive to wind. The shielding gas for GMAW welding can be blown away when welding outdoors. It's not a really good process for welding, you know, let's say Siberia or northern United States or Canada, somewhere out on the Great Plains where you've got a strong wind at most times. There's other processes that will um, be w that would be better choices for you know weld metal deposition. There's no slag so welding out of position is more difficult. Uh, the slag in shielded metal arc welding helps keep the liquid m metal in place you know when you're doing a vertical or a horizontal weld. So with GMAW the liquid weld metal just wants to pour out of there because there's no slag to help keep it in a situation where it's fighting gravity. And the GMAW welding gun is not good for welding in tight spaces. It's, you know, you're fighting geometry here. So sometimes if you got to get into a tight space, there's other welding processes that have a, you know, better geometry configuration that is, you know, good for situations that are tight. So these are things that you need. Okay, here's the summary for the gas metal arc welding process. Um, gas metal arc welding, GMAW, has four distinct, separate, different um, transfer modes. You've got short circuiting, which is the low voltage. You've got globular, which is the intermediate voltage. And then you've got um, spray, which is the high voltage. And then you've got pulse spray which tries to give you the best of both short circuiting and spray which would give you out of position welds or maybe not put as much heat into a part as you would with just a pure spray. There's multiple shielding gas combinations and depending on the, the shielding gas is going to depend on the metal you're welding, the position, the wires. There's a lot of things that come into play there. Also, the shielding gas is going to contribute to what process or uh, transfer mode you use in this process. Um, low cost equipment with uh, gas metal arc welding, this is one of the bonuses of this. High deposition rates, low cost consumables, you know, but once again, like I said before, and the advantages and disadvantages, it's, uh, it's, this process isn't for everything, every time, everywhere. But in the right situation, this thing can be a money maker and is a very effective welding process for uh, putting pieces of metal together.
Summary, in this module we covered consumables, welding wire, kind of gave it a brief overview, and then we covered the advantages and disadvantages of gas metal arc welding. So, 